What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Random Review Entertainment. We are talking today about our mid-season thoughts on the new Disney Plus Marvel Cinematic Universe series, Hawkeye, starring Jeremy Renner. What do we think about it? What is it really about? And what can we look forward to in the second half of this show? I want to get into it. Some of the Easter eggs, some of the surprises that some of the hardcore fans know to let you know about them here in my review and analysis of the first half of the season. Before we get into that, though, I want to remind you guys, this being YouTube, that uh, if you can take that your bow and stretch it out and hit that like button, hit a bullseye right on that thing. The YouTube algorithm will be happy. It will let other MCU fans know about this video and present it to them in their recommended list. So I very much appreciate you guys doing that. And let's get on to my thoughts about Hawkeye. So the setup for this show is it's around the holiday times and we are now, obviously, because in real life, we're around the holiday times. And Hawkeye is in New York with his kids. They're going to this very cheesy musical about the Avengers, primarily focused on Steve Rogers, called Rogers. The advertisements pop up a lot. Uh, and he's just trying to be there just to have time with his kids. Remember, Hawkeye wants to be out of this avenging stuff. He's been trying to get out of this stuff for years and years and years, but they keep pulling him back in. Meanwhile, we got the story about Kate Bishop, who is a young girl who was about, I think, 10 years old, supposedly, during the Battle of New York, the first Avengers movie, and she saw Hawkeye, you know, in that famous scene where he's running from the Chitauri and jumping off the side of the building and turns in slow motion to the camera and shoots his grappling hook bow and then flings himself into the building. That's what she saw from her destroyed home where the attack kind of wrecked her house and killed her father. We fast forward to modern times and Kate Bishop, her mother, they were doing pretty well. Her mother's running a kind of shady security firm. We'll get to that in a second. And is about to marry this new guy who comic book fans would know as Swordsman. The Swordsman and this other guy, they're going, his uncle, I believe, or uncle-in-law, whatever it would be, they're going to this auction at this gala dinner that Kate's supposed to dress up for. Kate, by the way, decided to show up in a tux to defy her mother who wanted her to show up in a red dress by the way vera that actor actress that's in the red dress you know she's well, we got some curves on her I'm, that's all i'm gonna say about it she looked good in the dress that's all i'm gonna say for for a lady like that she looked pretty good in it but we go on to find out that kate is sneaking in and just hanging out in the back of this black market auction where they're auctioning off things from the avengers compound that probably happened during the explosion in Endgame. A couple of these things too that they also have are Ronin's sword and Ronin's suit. The auction is attacked by the tracksuit mafia. Yes, that is the name of them. It was the name in the comic book too, I, I know. But the tracksuit mafia burst into this auction. Chaos erupts. Kate, for some reason, decides she wants to put on the Ronin outfit and this is her chance to prove herself because Kate grew up being very good and winning a whole lot of trophies in archery and martial arts, etc., etc., etc. So this is her chance to be a superhero just like Hawkeye, who she saw when she was a kid during the Battle of New York. Of course, this does not go the way she thinks she's gonna go, and she is basically put a bullseye, pun intended, on her back. Hawkeye comes in and has to save her at the end of episode one, and then we lead on to what's going on, what is happening with Kate Bishop's mother, what is she doing, is this company she running kind of shady, is it tied into the mafia, there's kind of hints very early on that it might be, is Swordsman, is he the Swordmaster, whatever his name is, is he really the guy behind the scenes of this whole thing? We are introduced to the thought that there's this character named Uncle by other people who may show up later, and well, obviously he's gonna show up. Many people suspect that this is going to be Kingpin from the comic books, and not only from the comic books, but Vincent D'Onofrio from the Netflix Marvel series, Daredevil and some of the other, well, actually, I think he was only in the Daredevil shows. And he has been rumored for a long time that the current MCU is bringing in the Netflix shows and the Netflix characters. And that includes Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin, Charlie Cox as Daredevil, and maybe Jessica Jones. Uh, we'll see if Kristen Ritter is going to be in the MCU at some point in time. But this was is kind of them kind of reaffirming this part of the universe, which makes a lot of sense because they're basically in phase four seem to be bringing in everything that they can from all the Marvel properties across all these different studios that own rights to them. He apparently is a patriarch to a character Echo who much like Kate Bishop trained and everything else, but she's kind of got the opposite side of her fandom for Hawkeye because Ronan killed 
her father. So you have this kind of dual thing with Kate Bishop's character who idolizes Hawkeye because she saw him as a hero on the day that her father died. And then you have Echo who villainizes Ronan, who's the same person as Hawkeye as we all know, but nobody else knows uh, because she saw him murder her father when Ronan was killing all of the crime bosses around the world. So there's a lot of intrigue to this, uh, but there's a lot of lightheartedness to this show too. There's a lot of jokes. Some of them are pretty funny. Some of them don't land. Uh, but the relationship between Kate Bishop and Hawkeye in this show is hilarious. Some of the things that they do in their little side missions, Hawkeye went to some Ren festival and had to fight one of those people to get the Ronin costume back because it all disappeared during a fire and all this other crazy stuff that happened. The tracksuit mafia guys, you know, they're, they're very stereotypical Russian mafia guys, which... I'm surprised that people don't have an issue with that because we take issue with every stereotype of any kind of uh, uh, class of people, but they're Russian and they're white, so I guess it's okay. I don't know. But nobody seems to be very upset about the stereotypical Russian tracksuit mafia group who are just a bunch of bubbling guys and one guy's trying to seek uh, relationship advice from Kate Bishop when they have him tied up and everything. It's just, they're the bumbling idiots of the show. And Lucky the Pizza Dog, who isn't officially Lucky the Pizza Dog yet. She, Kate just called him Pizza Dog. But Lucky the Pizza Dog is another character from, it, it, the dog is actually in the comic book. And this is all based off of the Hawkeye comic book that came out back in around 2012. Ironically enough, the same time the first Avengers movie came out, which acts as a backdrop for some of this, this uh, series. And the comic book had a lot of these things. There's a couple things changed around from the comic books. In the comic books, it was more that Kate Bishop was kind of like leading Hawkeye because Hawkeye had kind of gone off the rails a little bit. But in this one, Hawkeye is kind of, you know, there's, there's a lot of lethal weapon. There's a ton of lethal weapon and diehard references in here, but it's kind of the old, you know, Hawkeye's playing Murtaugh from Lethal Weapon and uh, she's playing, Kate Bishop is playing Riggs, the young, wild, crazy one. You know, it's that kind of dynamic of buddy cop film. In fact, that is what this Hawkeye series is loosely themed as, as a Shane Black, you know, Lethal Weapon, Christmas Time, Die Hard, that kind of, of uh, action film which Shane Black excelled at a lot. And they're doing a pretty good job of portraying it here in the MCU. Again, it's, it's another one of these things that the MCU does that always always makes me laugh when you hear people go, oh, it's a superhero star. I'm like, Marvel's got so many characters and so many things, and, and so, the same with DC as well, that, you know, if you think these are all comic book or origin shows and, and movies, you're vastly wrong. This is, this is a buddy cop show. This is not... Oh, somebody's going to go and fight off the bad guys and stuff. That there's a, that element to it that puts it in a superhero category. Kate Bishop is donning on a new persona, but the theme of the show is more of a buddy cop thing than it is. Hey, this is a new superhero, and they're going to gain their powers and fight the bad guy and win in the end. And you know that's not Marvel has steered away from that for the most part. There are some times when they do it again, but for the most part, they've steered away from a lot of that stuff. Um, they are in phase four though, so we are getting a lot of origin stories coming out with Shang-Chi, with the Eternals, uh, with the new Black Widow, and here with Kate Bishop, who will eventually be taking on the moniker of Hawkeye, and Echo, who, again, has some ties. And the Echo thing is very interesting because Echo is deaf. And, of course, we have Hawkeye, who now, after all of these explosions and battles he's been in over the years as an Avenger needs a hearing aid because he's going hard of hearing. So that's kind of cute. There's some really cute emotional moments in here. This, this ironically enough, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is known for the bad dad syndrome where there's so many bad dads in MCU. And Hawkeye seems to go completely against that where, you know, everybody's got a great dad. Hawkeye is a great dad. Kate Bishop's dad was a good guy, or at least so far until we get to the end of the series, he seemed like he was a good guy. Same thing with Echo's father. He seemed like a good guy. So we have a lot of positive male role models in this show, which is, again, is very strange for the MCU. You know, from Tony Stark's dad to, you know, Odin and the way he treated Loki and all of that stuff, and Black Panther and his father, you know, killed his brother and all this other stuff. So it's nice to see something different for the guys, for the dads for once. And the MCU. All right. Do I suggest that you watch Hawkeye? If you're an MCU fan, it's almost required. You got to watch it because, again, the exciting thing about what they're doing on the Disney Plus shows that they really haven't done in the movies, the Disney Plus shows, as I've said numerous times, is where it's at for 2021 with the MCU. 
but this kind of bridging with the old and bringing in the Netflix shows, the Daredevil shows that were very popular, but their style kind of clashed with what the MCU was. The Netflix shows were a little more gritty, a lot of blood and a little bit more hardcore and realistic, at least in the beginning. But actually having Daredevil, who may have a cameo in this and also may have a cameo in Spider-Man No Way Home and having Kingpin show up in this one is kind of a, it's another one of those mind blowing things where, you know, Marvel's doing the metaverse right now, the multiverse, and they're, they're doing it in canon in the shows. And they're also doing it on a macro real world level where all of these characters who are in separate movie studios franchises are now being brought in to the MCU and even the Netflix stuff, which was supposed to be in the same universe, but those guys never showed up in the movies or anything. Well, now they're being brought in to the main MCU storyline with everybody else. So now the continuity is actually going to be there. I think it's all pretty cool. It's a fun thing to see and I can only wait to see where to go with it. But yeah, I do suggest watching Hawkeye. The next uh, three episodes, there's only six episodes in the season. We're expecting to see uh, Lena Belova. I, I, I have an ex who's named Lena, and I kept calling her Yelena for the longest time. And she, in Russian, cursed me out and told me her name is it's Lena, not Yelena. So I'm going to call her Lena just so I don't get yelled at from my friend. But <laughs> Elena, Lena uh, is going to show up, Hawk, the new Black Widow, or who to, will eventually be the new Black Widow. It's supposed to show up in a series because you remember at the end of the Black Widow movie in the extra credit scene, she was sent after Hawkeye, who was allegedly the guy that killed her sister. And we also noticed as we've gone back now, and I looked at that scene again, that's not Hawkeye that she's looking at in that post credit scene in the Black Widow movie. It's Ronan unmasked to be Hawkeye. So there are people out there who know who Hawkeye is. I don't know if the crime syndicates, well, clearly they don't know because they all think it's Kate Bishop right now. So there's going to be a lot that they're going to have to pack into three episodes. And I think the next three episodes are going to move very fast and going to be this wild roller coaster of a ride to the end of the Hawkeye series. But I want to know what you guys think. Those of you who have seen it, let your voice be heard in the comment box below. And until next time, I will see you guys here for more news, rumors, and reviews on the Random Review Entertainment. Have a good day.